This is the first uh, in a series provided a look into the programs that make 311 uh, in North America unique. In the coming months, we will present on topics that showcase the programs and uh, processes that 311 across uh, North America have implemented and enhanced their organization. What make our 311 uh, shine bright? We will also catch up on the formal award of excellence winners to see where they are now. We welcome you all to attend all about all or any of the interest to you. Please visit CS Week 311 webinar, I mean website to register for upcoming webinars. Our presenter today is Richard Castillo. He's the chairperson for the 2017 CS uh, 311 webinar committee and customer service manager at City of Austin 311. Clark Bellamy, manager at the 311 at the City of Calgary 311. I apologize. And uh, Lena, I'm sorry if I said your name incorrectly. McKenzie. 311 Operation Coordinator at City of Calgary 311. We will discuss Austin 311 Development Program and the City of Calgary Operation and the Road to 2016 Award of Excellence. Uh, this is just an overview of, three, of customer service uh, CS Week, and we we are an industry network group for the current and prospective 311 customers uh, contact center throughout North America. This is a lot of information sharing, education, and it it's a lot of fun. CS 311 invites you to join us for our annual Engage 311 conference. And that conference is going to be taking place of May uh, 22nd through the 24th of 2017. And it's going to be held in Fort Worth, Texas. It's a three-day event open to Austin municipalities with an interest in 311 packed with great sessions, information sharing, education, and fun. Registration will be open later this fall. Watch your email and your social media channels for more information. We hope you can make it. Okay, during today's presentation, we have many uh, questions. Please upload them into the Q&A panel and remember to uh, select uh, all participants so everyone can see them. We will address all questions at the end of the uh, presentation. So with that said, it is my pleasure to in introduce City of Austin 311, recipient of the 2015 CS Week 311 Award of Excellence 2010 the 2010 uh, Best of Austin by the Austin Chronicle and award first place for Austin 311 PSAs and the promotional video campaign category of the Government Programming Award for the National Association of Telecommunication Officers and Advisor, which is NATO. NATO. Thank you, Richard, for joining us today. Thank you, Gertrude. Good morning, everyone. Uh, today, <clears throat> Austin 301 it will be addressing uh, career opportunities. And with our career opportunities, what this was intended to address was within our department, we have always been asked a question of where do I go? What is it that I can do uh, from an ambassador level all the way to the supervisor manager level? So. We created a program that helped us answer those questions of succession planning, resume, 
resume preparation and mock interviews. I mean, we've all been in that situation where you get asked, so if you win the lottery tomorrow, who's going to take your place? Uh, or, or the uh, more infamous one, if you got hit by a bus, who's here to take your place? Or who's here, who's trained to help uh, take over the operation? So with that said, we created a program that addresses those concerns and at the same time builds engagement and builds, we're not calling career pathing, we're calling career opportunity. Uh, with that said, we created the, pr the program to be external in an internal rotation. And what a rotation is, is that we allow someone the opportunity to gain job skills. Now, they have to meet certain core competencies first, uh, going with our city core competencies of customer service, cultural competence, dependable and trustworthy, effective communication, and problem solving. When we, when we adhere to, to that measure, the ambassador that goes out or the, CS, the CSR senior or the supervisor that goes out to these rotations is more successful. It also builds for us in an internal growth. It also builds for us a, a competency level that uh, helps build 311 for the future. We first concentrated with internal departments, but I'm going to concentrate right now with the external departments. Uh, we've handled multiple city departments uh, within, through, within the city of Austin that would <coughs> allow, uh, allow the, the growth for administrative, uh, for uh, actually also pet services, um, our legal department, uh, the uh, Austin Energy side as well, and disaster recovery. So these external department features, we've had everything from bilingual staffing to, uh, again, administrative legal, uh, building up those skill sets to allow people to apply for exter external positions to 311 and build, build that skill set internally. Those external skill sets have, have, been, have been very successful. We've been able to transition people from an ambassador level over to uh, an IT position to uh, administrative to HR to, to just various positions that not only support the real one but support the city of Austin. So we've been able to help with succession planning and development across the entire city. Of course, we don't forget ourselves, um, our internal rotation. We have a supervisor rotation, uh, system operations, and client information services. This gives uh, the opportunity to someone to see what a supervisor really does. Many times what, what we've all experienced is that someone may interview for a supervisor position and they get in and maybe didn't truly understand the role. This gives them a taste before they accept that type of position. Same thing for uh, IT operations. Someone sometimes will have the degree but maybe not the passion. This gives someone a taste of what that's going to end up really becoming for their, you know, for their career. Um, if not their life for, you know, a year or, or so. And, of course, client relations information services. This goes back to account management and how it, how it is that uh, we deal with our, not only our internal departments but our external departments, our you know, city of Austin, but going further beyond that, dealing with state, dealing with uh, the county as well, and how, how we all work together. So those types of rotation programs, all, that, all those um, – skills, all that knowledge is built up and built our talent pool for later on when we're hiring internally. Uh, we, we here have a what's called a customer service representative senior. Uh, that is a second tier, uh, like a lead, uh, rep, rep of those supervisors. They have external opportunities as well. As, a little bit higher than the administrative um, entry level. Uh, they also deal uh, more so with the account management side. This is a great way for them to, to not only get the four, the sorry, the five core competencies, but the uh, the ten that would be re would be required for management. And then we expanded for the customer service supervisor. We have had uh, manager rotations to where they understand the, uh, 
business of being a manager, what that entailed, its assistant analyst, other positions within 3 on one and uh, supervisor externally. These are just rotation opportunities, again, that helps build that skill set and allows them the opportunity to move throughout the city. So thinking beyond the, uh, the standard support role of customer service, you also have the SST, which is our uh, system support technicians. Again, building upon that, so that way, if you were an ambassador, you can see that uh, you would go from, a, from being an ambassador potentially to being an SST, and then what path you have here. So again, going with the career opportunities, knowing that there's not a ladder, there is always going to be a lattice. Uh, so that, that way you can move in several different directions. And explaining the, the difference between having that career ladder or the lattice as, and the idea of moving and being fluid with your career. Again, this is just continuing on this, with the presentation that we did for our agents and for the, uh, the staff here that there's many opportunities, many different ways that you can use career op a career opportunity to branch into different divisions and to different areas uh, within the city of Austin. Each of these, uh, when presented within our group, uh, we, we go to the internal website for the city of Austin and look at what is required for those positions when we educate them. This way, the person knows what's going to be expected of them in the future. Part of our program is in, includes resume preparation. Uh, we do a, a position review. We do a skill breakdown, the have, the have not, and the maybe have. There's many opportunities when you read a job description where people come back in and say, I don't know if I've done this before, I don't think I've done this before, when in actuality they have. It's just us being able to walk them through how they've accomplished that task in the past and making sure that the resume it fits that type of role. And also key work placement is important. Uh, and we, we educate that as part of our career opportunities program where we go through the job description with them and show them, hey, these are the key words, uh, where is it in your resume? Uh, oftentimes people forget about that, those key words and those action words uh, to, to where the point that it actually costs them a position or even the interview. So having this resume preparation as part of the career opportunities has been very successful for us. In addition, we do mock interviews. So with mock interviews, we treat this like a real interview. It is a supervisor prep beforehand with different types of behavioral questions, getting used to three, four, five part questions before they walk into a panel interview. We purposely pick a panel interview that is not within 311, so that that way, uh, one, you're in a true environment, because when you apply for a position, generally speaking, you're not gonna have people that are familiar with what you do. It also makes you go back in and think of the fact that I need to explain what 311 is or what I've done, so that that way these people understand because usually when you sit with someone that you've worked with for years or say even a few months, you think they know your job. So this gives them an opportunity to truly practice that skill set. We also have prove-it tests. And what the prove-it test is, is it allows people to go ahead and take a test on Excel, on access, on various components, call center management, workforce management, and gives them a an idea of where they sit within uh, that type of skill set. We do mock skill tests as well. These are specific tests that we use uh, that have been in-house developed uh, for Excel and presentation skills to give you back immediate feedback. Uh, the entire program for the mock interviews is set up to give back immediate feedback. Uh, in here is a screenshot of a overall uh, web graph that shows uh, a department, uh, a department skill set. So out of 100 points, you know, they have, they may be working with ambassadors, they scored at 60, relevant experience with 72, 
uh, the adaptability and then the Excel was a little bit lower, meaning that maybe that department would want to go ahead and, or that person may want to go ahead and practice on the Excel test if that's going to be something that they're going to have to be using in the future. This program itself has been very well received within the city of Austin. We have multiple departments that are pending uh, requests for staffing. Uh, we've had over 15 people go over into various city positions within the past six months. Uh, with, outside of 311, we've had also applicants uh, reapplying to, to, of course, return back to 311 now that they've got additional skill sets and uh, feel that you know, their contributions can be made back at 311 as well. Uh, as I mentioned before, we do have references uh, that we hang out with, with our program. These references go back directly to the city, different various city links. It helps them determine the pay scales, um, the different positions that are out there, just general job aids, and it really does add to the value of the program uh, so that way you can be prepared when you go through the career opportunity section of, of selecting the rotation of deciding whether or not you want to be part of that. If uh, you apply for a position, what's going to be the core competencies and building that core competency before the position becomes available. Okay, Richard, thank you for the information. Now I'll turn to the City of Calgary, recipient of the 2016 CS Week 311 Award of Excellence. Thank you, Clark and uh, Lena, for joining us Thank today. Thank you so much, Gertrude, and uh, thanks, Richard. Uh, very good information. Lena and I were just chatting here, going, gee, there's a bunch of stuff we could probably take away from, from that uh, to improve ourselves. Uh, first, we'd just like to say thanks to Synergy. Uh, we're very humbled uh, by being the recipients of the Synergy Award. Um, very impressive. Uh, you know, it's one thing to get uh, good scores from your employees and, and, and citizens, but when you see your peers across North America uh, hold the City of Calgary in, in such high regard, we're, we're very humbled and grateful uh, for that. And, um, you know, we're more than happy to share our experiences. Uh, I think we're all uh, in the business of customer service delivery. Um, so if there's anything that you see in the presentation um, or other things that might create some interest, uh, you know, we're, we're more than happy to share outside of this session. I mean, our goal is to make life better every day for our citizens. And I'm certain everyone on the phone as well that, that have conferenced in uh, have the same goals for their citizens. So, uh, we're just going to give you a little bit uh, of an overview about Calgary, uh, our 3 on one history, who we are. Um, Lena's going to talk about uh, teamwork. It's very important to us. Uh, some of our process improvements that we've done. Uh, we're going to speak to service delivery, uh, employee and citizen satisfaction, and then hopefully some time for uh, questions and answers. And nothing's off the table here. I mean, uh, give us some stumpers here. We love that. Uh, can't guarantee we can get you a sharp answer, but we'll do our best. And if we can't, uh, we'll certainly make sure through Synergy that we follow up and get those questions answered. Um, so. About Calgary, uh, just to give you a perspective, that little map there, the little dot there, is where the city of Calgary is located. Uh, we are up north. Uh, we're nestled uh, right beside the Rocky Mountains. So if you ever want to come up here for a visit and see our center, we're more than happy to host. And the good news is the mountains are about an hour away. Um, we have a population of about 1.2 million people, uh, but we have actually quite a large footprint um, of 825 square kilometers, and for our friends uh, down south, that equates to about 327 square miles. Now, I've heard that is the same, roughly the same size as the New York City footprint. So, um, interesting comparison. Uh, there's a lot more space here, uh, but uh, when you look at the size of Canada, uh, we are actually the third largest municipality in Canada. So, 1.2 million people. Um, get lots of calls. So, speaking of calls, um, before we get to calls, uh, just to give you a perspective, we are up in the Great White North. Um, a lot of folks might think uh, <laughs> we only have uh, winter as our season, but we do have four seasons. Um, sometimes, I think Lena can agree, it feels like... Uh, winter eight months out of the year. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, especially today, it's kind of cool. But 
Uh, we do deal with snow and ice complaints. We do deal with um, uh, waste uh, recycling leaves falling off uh, during the fall. Um, we've got summer programs and spring cleanup, street cleaning, all that sort of thing. So uh, literally soup to nuts as far as services that we do uh, for Calgarians. And in fact, uh, just a little bit of history about us. We were the first Canadian city uh, to launch a 3-in-1 service way back in May 18th of 2005. So we just celebrated our 11-year anniversary. Uh, we've been 24-7, 365 since that day. There hasn't been a day uh, since we opened that uh, we haven't been taking calls with a live person, um, no real upfront uh, IVR, integrated voice response system on the front end. You just basically dial a number and you get a live agent. Hopefully you get them within 30 seconds or less, which is our council defined target. Um, we do support most areas of the corporation. We support 28 lines of business. Calgary Transit has their own call center, but they're actually using our 311 system, so they get the, the benefits of um, the richness of the reports, um, the, the automatic tracking, the mapping that I'm, we're going to show you in a little bit. Um, but it's a separate and distinct call center, and, and we actually like it that way. Uh, transit, uh, they have certain peak times during rush hour, um, very long calls for trip planning. We'd rather have their folks focus on that while uh, we deal with the 582 other things that we've uh, configured in our 311 system. Um, we do accept both web and app submissions, so we've got a 311 Calgary app. Uh, we also have 210 service requests configured online for citizen self-service. Um, we're trying to move folks to um, what we call self-service channels. You can read into lower cost channels. Um, our cost per call is about 467, uh, and you've got to be careful how you compare that to other centers because everyone measures it differently. But the more basically we get on on the app or the web, um, the more savings and capacity we have in our three-on-one call center. And the nice thing with our technology is the, the service request that we've configured online or on the 3 in 1 Calgary app are the exact same service requests that a citizen would be using had they called 3 in 1 and asked an agent to perform it. So the maintenance uh, costs for us are much cheaper over time. We also monitor and respond to social media. We just started doing that with our senior agents. We are evolving to a 24-7 um, support model for that. Right now we're doing um, core business hours, evenings, and weekends as well. Uh, and uh, as of yesterday, we've received 12,186,692 calls. So, um, yes, we do, uh, we do measure everything down to 15-minute increments, and <laughs> definitely our, our calls go. So, uh, being uh, a call center, we do track everything, and you can see that uh, this graph just gives you an idea of our call patterns over the last uh, number of years. So the green line at the bottom is when we first launched. We didn't have all of our 28 lines of business. Um, configured in our 3-in-1 system, but we do have most of them now. So the, the red dashed line is where we are for call volumes. And you can see there's sort of a, a bell curve uh, in our call volumes. So um, normally as the snow starts to recede in April, March and April, the call volumes start to increase. They peak in June. Uh, you know, there's a lot more people out and about. They notice the potholes, the cracks, the noisy lawnmowers, the parties. Um, and uh, June is our tax time. And then the call volumes will slowly drop off until our first snowfall. Now you see these red little dots here. Um, these are our record months in our history in the last 11 years. Uh, since our 2013 flood, you see uh, in 2013 we had a 1 in 100 year event in Calgary and uh, boy, folks sure called us. And um, in fact, we've had six record months of call volume in our history since the June 2013 flood. So, Kept us very busy. Um, we've got a pretty robust um, CRM, and that really helped us through and prove the value of 311. Our goal now has been to try and move those services to those other lower cost channels, such as the web and the app. And we've migrated about 90,000 of those requests that normally went through the phone. Folks are now doing those on the web and the app. As far as who we are, uh, we've got 62 full-time agents right now, two part-timers. Uh, we just started something new last uh, November uh, where we hired on-call staff because we, with those peaks and valleys that you see, we realized that, you know, between 11 and 12, we'll get, uh, during our busy time, between uh, six to 700 calls an hour. And there's just no way you can really plan for that. I mean, that's kind of 
smiling because she does all the scheduling. It's really tough. So we thought, well, let's try hiring on-call staff. We are a unionized shop. This allows us to uh, schedule up to 20 hours a week uh, to get those folks in the hours that we actually need them. And regularly, we hire seasonal folks, so about 11 staff that we hire full-time. Usually they start in March for training. Uh, it takes about five weeks to train. Uh, and then they're on the phones until October, Thanksgiving weekend, and then we let them go, basically. Um, six senior agents, uh, we're scheduling that up to eight by the end of the year. We've got six managers on our leadership team. 13 business advisors that configure the three-on-one product. They configure it right in the three-on-one call center. Uh, there's traditionally a sort of an IT kind of function, but the, the tool is so flexible that we've basically got them in the three-on-one center to allow us to be very reactive when circumstances demand. So during the flood, we had a service request built within an hour in the emergency operations center um, to allow folks to do inspections, to get people back in their homes, and we had a similar experience during our snow timber event in 2014 uh, where we had a, a, an early snowfall and it brought a lot of trees down across the city. And uh, again, we had a service request on the 3 one Calgary app within a day. Um, and to the support of our vendor as well, they stepped up. Uh, we're very, very impressed with that. Uh, two trainers, uh, one admin support, and that is basically who we are. Now, uh, teamwork to us uh, certainly is very, very important. And uh, I think through the next uh, series of slides uh, that Lena's going to share with you, you'll, and the pictures, you'll see that uh, that's something that's near and dear to our hearts. So I'm just going to hand this over to Lena and she's going to walk you through uh, some of the things. But first, I'm going to talk about our redesign. Sorry. Um, we just went through, uh, when I joined uh, the center as a the call center manager, um, I realized that our equipment was kind of old. It's 10 years since we had, uh, had equipment replaced. Uh, we kind of knew it was that end of life cycle, but we thought, geez, this is um, a budget year. Let's, um, let's evaluate get some empirical data to see whether or not uh, council was willing to, to invest in the call center and get us some much needed upgrades. So we had an audit done from our furniture supplier uh, and it turned out that uh, they confirmed that our desks uh, and most of our agent equipment was at the end of its life cycle. So um, we realized we need some funding. Uh, we went, got an estimate of cost, went to council. Uh, they were uh, kind enough to give us uh, $200,000 to redesign our call center. And uh, we basically physically changed the entire footprint and we, we almost literally, Lena, uh, built it right from scratch. I mean, we replaced the carpet, we replaced all the desks, uh, we replaced the um, uh, walls, uh, we put in a locker room, uh, a private phone room that you see there in the top right-hand corner so agents could have a private location on the three-on-one floor where they can get um, a private area to have phone calls because we did notice staff would wander out of the call center, maybe down into the basement or in the main floor. Um, they really didn't have a, a private place to have a conversation. So we thought, let's build something for them. We solicited their input quite heavily in this process. In fact, we, um, we actually got them to um, test drive two different desks uh, that were ergonomically approved for the city, um, as well as the lighting options that are on their desk, um, the monitors, the ergonomic settings, and they, at the end of the day, they ended up voting on the equipment they wanted. Um, these are their tools. I mean, this is, uh, you know, we're looking at this as an, a 10-year investment. Uh, they're sitting, standing, you know, t almost 9.25 hours a day or longer if they're working overtime. We wanted to make sure that we spent the right amount of money with the understanding this is a 10-year investment so that they have the snap-on tool or, uh, you know, the really good uh, equipment. So they ended up voting for an electronic desk that rises uh, automatically. It's like a sleep number bed. They just push a button. Uh, there's an ergonomic number for them that they can type in and it'll just automatically go up. Uh, we did that with the intention that we do see workers' compensation claims, folks that injure their backs by trying to lift the desk up with all the equipment on it. Um, that was um, hopefully eliminated or, or we mitigated that by giving the, op the option to push the button, have the motor actually raise the um, floor uh, or the desk from the floor and uh, allow, them to be, allow them to stand up and sit down whenever they want without a lot of effort. 
Uh, the other thing that's significantly different in this picture is um, the alignment went uh, from north-south uh, to east-west. Um, the old pattern, the walls were much higher between the, the workstations, so we couldn't see uh, staff on the other side of the first row and the operations coordinator's offices were looking out at that wall. Uh, we do have an aging workforce and unfortunately in the last two years we lost two of our staff to sudden death. Uh, very concerned that uh, you know, if someone had a medical issue that they could be on a call and if we're not watching uh, there could be a bad outcome. So we really wanted to make sure that when we redesigned our call center that we, everyone can see everybody else. Uh, and that's actually uh, proven beneficial already because we've had a few medical incidents where we've had to have um, ambulance technicians come out and, and get, folks, uh, get, get folks to the hospital. So it's already proven its worth. Uh, we did have staff heavily involved in the input on this. Um, and at the very back, if you're looking at that picture with the little green guy that's running, if you look way at the back, we actually took an idea uh, for a nesting station where we train all of our new hires into a, a special area where the trainer can set up with a special desk and they can keep the new hires in a specific area uh, of the floor uh, as they're coming out of the training class, as well as our work from home agents that we'll be talking about in a bit. Um, we gleaned that from, uh, from Charlotte in 2015. We went on a tour of the Charlotte um, call center and it was amazing. It was um, very informative and we came back to Calgary with that idea for the nesting station and we were lucky enough to be able to put it into our office redesign and it's been very, very positive results for us. Yeah, it's great. We also took our, our, uh, our wall, so we had a pretty boring wall uh, as the agents come into the call center. Um, these words, we wanted things that agents could think of when they come to start their day, that these are the key things that they're responsible for, that they have control of, and the pillar um, statement, individual responsibility, collective accountability is what our new city manager believes all of us as city employees need to, need to follow. So we put that in, it uh, used to be an old dreary hallway. Um, the locker room we put right in the call center as well to minimize the walking away of the call center. They can secure all their articles. Um, and um, we also put some interesting things in as well. Uh, we've got a writable wall, so on the left there you see where the service awards are. You can actually physically write on that wall, so it changes up all the time. We will ask staff for feedback, uh, we are honoring them for their service awards, uh, we may ask them a polling question, so we just write on the wall. It wasn't very expensive for us to do that, and uh, it's, it's living and breathing. That used to be an old cork board wall. Um, the 311 logo there, uh, it's really hard to see in the picture. But all those words that you see in there, we actually pulled all of the citizen compliments that we received um, over the last few years. And those words are actually citizen words uh, of them thanking 3 and one for various services that the agents performed. And then we've got little thought bubbles that we change up every week based on the kudos that we get on a weekly basis. And the EOC activation screen, we thought on the other side of that wall, um, in the hallway. We just highlighted some of our 10-year anniversary uh, achievements uh, so that agents realize that they make a difference not only every single day, but there's some major events that we've participated in over the last year, 10 years so that they realize that they do play a part in providing great service and making them feel uh, proud as uh, city employees. So we're almost done that redesign. Uh, it was really from the ground up. There were some savings. We got uh, we leveraged the life cycle maintenance to get the carpet replaced. That carpet, if you believe it, it was about $40,000 to replace carpet. I mean, I think I'm in the wrong job. Mm -hmm. um, but we leveraged our maintenance life cycle agreement with our corporate properties that manage the building so that they paid for the replacement of the carpet because it was, um, you know, 10 years old at that time. So uh, there are ways to save some money there. Uh, we're almost done. We just got some feedback from the agents on what they want to see as far as pictures on the walls. Uh, so we've got a city sort of theme. Uh, Lena and the other operations coordinators are making that decision based on feedback from the staff. And then we're done. So really looking forward to seeing uh, that out. Um, now it's time for the uh, spirit team. Good morning. Um, teamwork is a very important um, aspect of call centers. And our um, focus on teamwork is really the agent-driven, it's staff-driven. 
the staff do have a spirit team that's led and organized by them. Um, they try and have monthly events um, to raise some money and they try and make it fun. We have 50-50 draws, we have pizza day, we have popcorn day, we have taco in a bag, which is quite um, popular I hear and very tasty. And when the weather allows, we have a barbecue in our outside area. Um, we try and help our um, spirit team as much as we can, um, funding some of the food that they use so that their return to the committee can be much greater. Um, the staff enjoy having these fun activities to do. It's usually it's during work time, but um, as we all know with call centers, it's usually done during your break. In 2015, we had some fun. You can see on the top, um, in the top um, slide during the Stanley Cup playoffs, as you can imagine, um, Calgary is very, um, very um, uh, hockey city, and we love our flames. We have some team members that really love the Vancouver Canucks, so we challenged Vancouver 311 to a little friendly competition, and that worked out great for us and for the food bank because that was the that was the prize. So Calgary did take the first round there, and then we connected with um, San Jose, and that went better for San Jose because they took that round. So. Um, all in all, it was a lot of fun, and um, the food banks were the recipients of those. We also um, support different organizations throughout the, the um, city of Calgary. One of them that they do is um, the Calgary Food Bank and the Calgary Veterans Food, food Bank. A um, little later on, there'll be some slides on some of the food that we've collected for them. Customer Service Week, as you can imagine, is a really um, big deal. We celebrate it. Um, we go all out every year, actually. The managers come in the Sunday before, and we decorate the office so that it's a very festive, um, festive looking for Monday morning. We've had various um, partnered departments. They recognize our staff um, for the customer service throughout the year. Typically, they'll bring in um, snacks, cake. As we all know, call centers love cake, and they always bring their thanks with them as well. This past year for Customer Service Week, we had a waste and recycling foreman. They came up and spent a half a day listening to calls with our agents, which was really great because it gave them a better understanding of what we do. We find that most departments are very, um, they think all we do is their calls. They don't realize that they're just a small portion of what we take. So having them come up and spend half a day and listen to the calls that our agents um, are taking for them and for the other business unit is really a great relation, relationship building tool. So we're trying to do that more often as well. We also have a 311 volunteer team that was introduced about two years ago. It's organized by the staff and the role is really to give back to the community. One of the big things that they did, as Clark had mentioned, in September of um, 2014, Calgary experienced a natural disaster that we lovingly called Snowtember. And um, what happened is that during its peak, actually, 311, we received over 28,000 calls in the one day during the height of the storm. Of course, that was the record call volume in our history for one day. And our team supported the citizens throughout this disaster, and our staff decided, um, decided that they wanted to give back in a different way. So on the hottest day of the year, and it was over 100 degrees, it was in August, the 311 volunteer team and their families planted over 311 trees in an area that was reclaimed from the 2013 flood. Um, we also do a lot of work with the Gene Center in Calgary, and that's an organization that helps guide people who have been caught in the cycle of poverty and addiction. So the top um, photo shows we, were, um, we went to a home that the Dream um, Center rents, and we got it ready for some citizens to move into. The Mayor's Food Drive. Every year um, in Calgary, as in all other cities, there's a tremendous need to support the food bank. Our Human Resources Department last year challenged um, 311 to a friendly competition. And then our Mayor also issued a challenge to the corporation's 16,000 employees to donate the most food for their business unit. And the winner receives a beautiful um, pepper mill that's on the left-hand side. With the, it's the Calgary Tower with the Mayor's Food Drive engraved on top and the Calgary logo on the side. 311, as always, roasted the challenge and we proudly display our pepper mill in our awards cabinet. As you can see, we collected um, over 6,600 items and almost 3,100 pounds of necessities. So we're very proud of that. 
We also have, every month, we have a Wellness Wednesday campaign that was started about five or six years ago. Because working in a call center environment can take a toll on your mind and on your body. So Wellness Wednesday was introduced as a fun way to bring awareness to a variety of issues that are prominent in call centers. Plus, it allows the agents to feel supported, appreciated, and to be given the knowledge to make better choices. On the top there, you notice the teapot poses. One of our monthly Wellness Wednesday topics was tea and its health benefits. So staff had fun posing as a teapot, and they also had to sing, I'm a little teapot, in order to get an extra ballot in for a draw at the end of the day. So we try and make it as, as fun as we can as well. Um, our director as well has recently had a heart attack, and in an effort to support her return to work and a healthy lifestyle, 311 is hosting a healthy potluck this Monday, September 12th. It's a friendly competition amongst the staff to bring in healthy and tasty dish, and she'll be judging them, and there'll be a prize for the best dish. It looks like I can't go any further, so... Here we go, and I'll bring it back to Clark to talk about process improvements. Okay, thank you, Lena. Um, certainly lots of things going on with 3 and one not only with um, getting our staff engaged and, and involved uh, and giving them the, the tools and equipment that they need. One of the key things that uh, they need to do their job is, is the customer relationship management tool that we use. Um, so we use the, the Motorola customer service request system and a fundamental change at the City of Calgary that we're going through right now is to move the, the actual servers that the Motorola system are on at the City of Calgary. We're working on migrating that service to the cloud, the Motorola cloud. So Motorola will provide uh, the server and the support. They will do all the upgrades for us. Uh, it's a significant change, especially being a Canadian, in a Canadian environment, uh, privacy is uh, certainly top of mind and security um, is top of mind for us. So uh, we're doing a very thorough evaluation of migrating that platform using a proof of concept to get uh, our 3 on one system in the cloud. And we expect that uh, um, our upgrades will, you know, occur every year, uh, whereas in the past we struggled to get um, important patches and enhancements that the product offered. We just couldn't deliver them in our business cycles that sort of require us to sort of deploy these things in the off-peak. So sort of, you know, the September to, to February timeline is really the best time for us to deploy new upgrades. But the, um, the Motorola cloud option will also allow us a whole bunch of significant offering, service offerings that allow us to do uh, online scheduling, so book, we do fingerprint inspections, um, water meter inspections, a whole bunch of things there that um, we'll be able to introduce in 2017 uh, if we're successful with rolling out the proof of concept that will help give citizens more options, free up capacity for 3 on one agents to bring other business unit partners in so that we can basically give citizen options. Um, we also introduced a, a day in the life. Uh, we had a service failure uh, with one of our business unit partners uh, where it was sort of an agent versus a, a field crew technician. And when we kind of analyzed that, okay, there is he said, she said, but when we really looked at it, we realized the agents don't understand what the crews do out in the field and the crews don't understand what the agents do out in the field. So we said, well, why don't we start a day in the life of a three-on-one agent and uh, a three-on-one water crew? And we actually had two of our agents go out uh, to the regular foreman um, you know, bi-weekly sessions and actually present to them what 301 is all about, what an agent does, a day in the life of the agent. And then we invited those crews to come back and present to all of our staff. And I mean, a very tremendous aha moment for both parties to realize, yeah, we're all the same thing together. And though we might do things differently, uh, we, everyone got a better understanding of the hard work that everyone does to make sure that that citizen experience is great. So uh, that continues. Uh, it, it started last year and uh, that continues now. Um, we've got collaboration, we've got partnership. NMAX is our, our power supply uh, utility company. They're sort of, they're not part of the city of Calgary, although we're the main shareholder. Had a lot of issues with power outages. We use the 301 data. Uh, we track informational calls using the tool so we can map locations of where people are not only calling for services, 
but we can also map where they're calling for information. Provided that to NMAX so that uh, uh, they realize maybe they need to notify us of power outages at the same time their crews are informed so that we could update our front end message, uh, provide scripted information to the citizen um, without having to wait to uh, speak to uh, an agent and free up our calls. And that saved us about 65,000 calls last year by implementing that. And, and it was clear hard data that we provided from our 301 system. Uh, the picture on the right is our citizen dashboard. So if you go to calgary.ca, type in dashboard, uh, we post our stats, some of our stats, um, on the web, how many calls we've handled, how many service requests we've handled, what our um, council-defined service targets are, uh, and once we get to the cloud, there's a whole bunch of other things that we're going to be able to produce, like putting mapping of all the service requests. Uh, citizens can choose if they want to see potholes or water main breaks or trees down, and it'll just populate um, all the service requests that have been performed in those communities so citizens can actually see the value for tax money. That's very important for us in, in uh, sight of sh shrinking budgets, um, but we are actually working to deploy that in 2017. And we also went through a council defined three stages project to clearly define uh, for online service requests a standard process to indicate when uh, crews have received a request, uh, when they're working on it, and what they did. And citizens can check online rather than calling 311 to get a status update. Basically, the system sends them an email if they provided that at time of call or if they've gone online. And there's a link in that email where they can just click on check the status updates on a regular basis and it's real-time updates, uh, in some cases from crews right in the field uh, working on their laptops using the 301 system uh, so that they're not having to call 301 to find out what's going on. Um, also, uh, we talked about the on-call staff. Uh, we've got 14 of those, but another major project that we're working on is getting our 3 on one agents working from home. So we're in a pilot phase right now. We've got six agents working from home uh, currently. Uh, we started that uh, with two agents back in July of last year. Uh, we're still working towards getting the technology in a process where we can roll it out to staff, but already we've saved 48,230 kilometers and for our friends down south, that equates to um, 29,967 miles that agents have saved simply from working from home. And they've taken 65,717 calls since the end of June from home. Uh, and that's helped us immensely when we've had unplanned events where we have a wind, a rain um, event, or uh, a lot of tax calls where we actually ask these people if they can log in from home. Um, been very successful, and uh, we've seen actually folks from home logged in longer than they are in the office, and our sickness and accident uh, has actually reduced for the folks working from home than when they were in the office. So we're quite excited. It's a win-win for the city, um, and it's a win-win for the employees, and now we have a, a just over 20 folks that have expressed interest, and they're kind of waiting for us as to when um, you know, when can you get this thing deployed so we can start working from home too? And that's going to make us more resilient to the city. We mentioned the 2013 flood. Uh, we were building a backup center uh, downtown. Um, the funding we had was well over a million dollars for that. Um, now we've realized, well, if we virtualize our workforce, we're more resilient as a city to respond to natural events or unplanned events. Um, and if we've got one area affected, we lose our three-on-one center, we can just have the agents work from home and still maintain our business. As far as uh, some innovation, our mapping system, this is just a 10-year moving average of our map. This shows potholes uh, reports over the last 10 years. So we can take that intelligence and turn it into visual maps that are meaningful to roads crews so that they can sort of plan their, um, their staffing levels. Uh, when we analyze the data from the 311 system, what we realize is every second year there's a peak in potholes. Now, um, since this is a location-based product, we can zoom right down to a particular quadrant. Uh, we can start adding additional elements of data to determine is it the materials that the crews are using, is it the contractors that we're having go out uh, to perform the work, um, is it a combination of the terrain so that um, you know maybe we can better plan for next year's staffing and pothole campaigns so that we target the areas that are the most impacted or perhaps we make deci better decisions uh, so that instead of you know, fixing the potholes, maybe we just simply um, replace the road to a surface overlay 
uh, and it's more cost effective for us as a corporation. So there's all kinds of stuff here. Um, with our system, uh, crews out in the field, if they have access to the 3 in one system, can literally see a storm moving across the city based on the types of service requests that are coming in. So as the manhole covers start uh, blowing off, the catch base is starting to flood, basement seepage, they can see all of that information in real time on the, our 3 one mapping product. And we're actually linked in right into our emergency operations center. So everything that the agents are taking today is visible to the emergency operations center. So if they see something going south, um, they have, are in a better position to respond. And we built in sort of email alerts to notify managers. So when they see so many catch basins flooding in a particular area over a certain period of time, the system starts sending out email notification alerts to say, hey, something's different here. And perhaps we have a better outcome, different type of response for citizens than we've had in the past. Now we talked about citizen satisfaction um, and employee satisfaction. Alina spoke at the conference. We were at 94% satisfaction. We do a, a survey. Um, basically every quarter um, to make sure it's uh, uh, Ipsos Reed does the survey for us. And this is just an example from this year that our, our you know, overall experience with 3 one staff, um, it was 95% in January, in May it was 98%. Can't get much darn better than that. So our staff um, are doing a tremendous job. Uh, we've got some, some work to do in, in explaining about follow-ups and, and navigating to calgary.ca, but overall we're, we're totally proud of our staff and the, the service that they provide. Um, this is citizen uh, input, and I think that sort of defines um, citizens are happy with 311. Uh, and we also do employee service surveys annually, uh, and this is last year's survey. Uh, so there's four C's that the city have, character, competence, commitment, and collaboration. Uh, 2015 results, the area highlighted in red, is um, 311. So we're much higher than both our, our business unit, our department, and even citywide as far as character, competence, and commitment. Um, collaboration, we're right at bang on there in the middle. And uh, when we ask all the questions, they kind of roll up into different sort of uh, areas. So engagement, role clarity, personal growth, team culture, leadership impact, and supervisor relationship. Um, again, uh, in many of these areas, our call center exceeds not only our, our business unit, but our department, and in, in many cases, the city. And uh, to me, being in call centers, that is a stunning measure to have, because um, agents quite often feel that they don't have the um, capacity or control over the process, because it's the business unit's kind of defining workflow. But uh, this tells me we're on the dartboard, we're almost right in the bullseye, we've still got work to do, but um, uh, all of the leadership team are very happy with seeing that the efforts that we're doing to try and engage our staff are being reflected in the scores that they're providing us. So very happy to see with that um, that we're kind of doing the right things. So um, any questions for Calgary? Well, Clark and Lena, uh, thank you guys uh, for the glimpse into uh, Calgary 311 operations. Uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, please submit them through the Q&A panel. I know one question, what, what tool is the City of Calgary using in their 3-on-1 Center? Uh, we use, the again, Motorola Customer Service Request System. So we um, deployed that in October 4th, 2004, just uh, a few months before we went live, and we've been on it ever since. It's worked well for us. Well, question uh, for Richard. Uh, what advantages have you seen uh, from the programs that you talked about? So some of the advantages we've seen is an increase in employee engagement, uh, people knowing that there is a career path beyond the, the level that they're currently at. Um, we've seen that. We've seen also a, 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 a wonderful, um, mm -hmm. almost like a phenomenal, acceptance throughout the city department to, for this program to, to the point where some departments are requesting to clone uh, at their facilities or partner with us for the mock interviews. Uh, and what I, what I mean by partner is that they're coming back in and saying, can we put our people through this program at 311 so that 
they can build up their own succession planning as well. So it's, it's a great partnership throughout all the city departments. Okay, I know we uh, came up on the 11 o'clock hour. I uh, want to respect uh, your time and conclude promptly. If you have any, uh, any other questions uh, for uh, us uh, and they're not answered, uh, please let Amber know at uh, CS Week. Um, you can forward it to the presenter. We'll post them on the web, uh, webinar for a follow-up. Um, also, uh, the webinar will be recorded available, like I said, on the uh, web, web, website in the CS311 webinar location later this afternoon. Um, we also want to let you know the uh, click on the webinar drop down menu uh, on the home page. And uh, of course, uh, the uh, 311 uh, reboot will be Thursday, October the 6th, uh, 2016 at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. So stay tuned for that. That's the next webinar. And we'll be featuring the uh, 2015 uh, 311 Award of Excellence recipient. So register for that. Uh, that will be uh, Dallas 311. Okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? And I want to thank you all for joining us today uh, for the uh, CS Week 311 webinar. And you guys have a great day. <laughs>